Hello and welcome to this Heroes of Blackreach tutorial. In this tutorial I'll be looking at movement. In Heroes of Blackreach, when a unit is activated, it can either take a movement action, a firing action, or it may do nothing. And in this tutorial I'll just be looking at the movement action. Each unit in the game has its movement value shown inside a blue arrow. So here we can see Sergeant Tellian has a movement value of 4. That means that he can move up to 4 squares on the battle grid. Let's see that movement in action. So here we have a tactical squad and they have a movement value of 3. So that means they can move 3 squares from their current position. So they could move like this, or they could move like this, or they could even move diagonally like this. And depending on the circumstances, they may want to combine orthogonal and diagonal movement to get to particular locations. For most infantry units, it doesn't matter which way they face. They can see 360 degrees around them and move in any direction, regardless of the facing of the figures on the tile. Some moves that you can perform don't require you to leave the square, and these are called zero moves. There are two different types of zero move. You can either change the state of a unit that can change from active to inactive. So for example, a scout unit could become hidden. Or you can change the facing of a unit. And that really only applies if the unit has a limited arc of fire. In other words, if it can only target a part of the battle grid, then the facing of a unit becomes important. An infantry unit can either change its state or change its facing either at the start or at the end of its movement action. An infantry unit cannot move through enemy infantry units or through friendly or enemy vehicles. So here we have an example. We have this tactical unit that's trying to move to the square marked here. Now it cannot pass through the rhino because the rhino is a vehicle. However, it could go to the left or to the right because it can pass through Sergeant Vorolanus because he is a friendly infantry unit. The tactical squad must finish his movement action in an unoccupied square. During the game, a unit may receive a suppressed marker. Each suppressed marker that's given to any unit reduces its movement by two. So this tactical squad that has a, had a movement of three now has a movement of 1. So if we add a second suppressed marker, then its movement becomes minus 1. And any time a unit's movement becomes 0 or fewer, then that unit is immobilized. And when a unit is immobilized, it means it cannot leave the square that it is in. If for some reason the unit is forced to leave that square, then it would be immediately destroyed. And we'll look at some ways that units may be forced to leave their square later in the tutorial. A unit that's immobilized, though, can still perform a zero move, so it could change its facing or change its state. Where a unit can move is often dictated by the terrain. So here we have that same tactical squad, but we have a little bit more terrain for them to navigate. Terrain elements on the battle grid are denoted with a colored border, and they are always accompanied by groups of symbols. Some of those symbols are associated with movement, and some of the symbols are associated with firing or assault. In this tutorial, I'm only going to look at the icons which affect movement. So let's have a look at the rocks that are next to the tactical squad and see what the symbols on that terrain element actually mean. The first symbol that I'm going to look at is the blue arrow and it has a white cross on it. That symbol means that these rocks are difficult terrain. When a unit enters a terrain element that has this difficult terrain symbol, it must immediately stop its movement. If a unit moves within an area of difficult terrain, then it can only move a single square at a time and must end its move after each step. The next terrain symbol that I'm going to explain is this one. And this is the symbol for impassable terrain. This symbol means that no unit may enter this terrain element. Any unit that is forced to enter an impassable terrain element is immediately destroyed. If the tactical squad wanted to go to the square beyond that impassable terrain, then they would have to navigate a route around it. 
So we've looked so far just at moving infantry. There are also vehicles in the game of Heroes of Black Reach, so let's have a look at how vehicles move. The way that vehicles move depends on how many squares the unit occupies. Some vehicles come as single squares, some as two squares, and some as four squares. Vehicles that occupy one square move in very much the same way as infantry units. So this dreadnought has a movement value of three. So here we can see the unit moving forward, and as it moves, it can change its facing just like an infantry unit. Next, let's have a look at how a two square vehicle moves. So here we have a rhino on the right hand side of the battle grid and it's trying to reach this red marked square on the left hand side. So let's see how a two square vehicle is able to navigate the terrain and reach that red square. So when the rhino moves forward, count the number of spaces moved from the front of the unit counter. So this would be one, two, three, four, five, and six. It's also possible for a two square vehicle to move backwards. So in this example, I'm going to show how you can combine backwards movement with pivoting and forward movement. So the rhino is trying to reach this marked square. So it takes three steps backwards. Next, it does a pivot through 45 degrees, which costs one movement. Then it repeats that, costing another movement, which takes it up to five. It has one movement left, so it moves forward and reaches its target square. Sometimes a two square vehicle may end its movement in a diagonal orientation. When it does that, it's still considered to only occupy two squares, those squares that I've marked in green. It is possible for units to occupy those three squares on either side of the rhino, and in that case the rhino will just overlap those units. But the rhino is technically just occupying those green squares. Next, Let's look at vehicles that occupy four squares. So here we have a Land Raider Redeemer, and we're gonna see how that can move across the battle grid. So like a two square unit, a four square unit can only move forwards or backwards. However, unlike a two square unit, a four square unit cannot move diagonally. As this Land Raider Redeemer moves forward, if it wishes to turn, it has to turn through 90 degrees in order to change the direction it's moving. Each 90 degree pivot that a four square vehicle makes costs one square of movement. So we can see that this Land Raider Redeemer has moved four squares to reach its final destination. When a four square vehicle moves, all of the squares under the vehicle's counter must always be legal for each move that the vehicle makes. So for example, one part of the vehicle could not pass through impassable terrain on its way to its final destination. Every square has to be legal along the way. So now we've looked at the movement of different types of vehicles. Let's look at how the terrain elements can affect the movement of those vehicles. So here we have a rhino, and the rhino is a heavy vehicle. You can tell that because its defense value has a gray background. We've previously looked at terrain elements that are difficult terrain and impassable terrain. Now we're going to look at terrain elements that are impassable to specific types of units. So this cluster of symbols on these rocks, and you can see them in multiple places on the battle grid, signify that these rocks are impassable to certain types of vehicles. So in this case, the impassable symbol that we've seen before, that red circle, is joined with a unit color. So all of the rock terrain elements on this battle grid are impassable to both light vehicles and heavy vehicles. So only infantry can move into those rocks. Next, let's look at using vehicles to run over enemy infantry. When a vehicle moves, it can pass through squares that contain friendly or enemy infantry. However, if a vehicle chooses to end its movement in a square that's occupied by an enemy infantry unit, then it's considered to have run over that infantry unit. At that point, the enemy unit must make a forced move, and it must do so into any freely available adjacent square. So I've indicated the squares that that sluggers unit could move into in green. So the sluggers unit moves away into this square at the top of the battle grid, and also has to take a suppressed marker. Now let's suppose that these two tactical units move up alongside the rhino. 
If the Rhino were then to move up and try to run over the Slugger's unit one more time, then the Slugger's unit would have nowhere legal left to move. So it couldn't move up because that would take it off the battle grid. It can't go left or right because that would mean moving within the zone of control of these tactical squads. Now I'm not going to go into detail about zone of control here because there's another tutorial available on zone of control. So do look that one out. But at this point, the Slugger's unit cannot take its force move and therefore it is immediately destroyed. When vehicles get destroyed, they become wrecks on the battle grid. Here we can see an orc truck that has been destroyed and is a steaming wreck. The rhino in the bottom left hand corner wants to get to this square at the top marked with an X. So notice that this wreck is impassable only to light vehicles. You'll also notice that the orc truck has this symbol at the top. That tells you that it is a structure and the number inside it tells you how many points of destruction you have to deal before that structure is removed from the battle grid. The Rhino then moves forward and crushes the back of that truck. As it does so, it delivers one destruction point to that wreck. Next, the front of the Rhino moves forward onto the second square of the wreck. And at that point, it deals a second destruction point to the wreck. Now you can only do a maximum of two destruction points to a wreck by crushing it. So no matter how many times we drove backwards and forwards over the wreck with this Rhino in a single movement action, we never do more than two destruction points. So that wreck only had two structure points and we've dealt two points of destruction and so therefore it is removed from the battle grid as the Rhino emerges from over the top of it. And then the Rhino continues on to its target point. Bear in mind though that some wrecks are completely impassable to infantry or vehicles. So in this case, this land raider, which has been wrecked, can only have destruction points dealt to it by firing at it. You cannot deal destruction points by crushing it. So to finish off this tutorial, I'll have a look at a couple of special abilities that apply to movement. The first of those is flying. So some units have the ability to fly, and that's indicated by these wings that have been added to the movement symbol. Units that can fly can move over terrain elements and units that would normally be impassable. So here this assault unit can fly up and over this piece of impassable terrain, continue on over the top of that land raider, and then finish its move on this unoccupied square at the top of the battle grid. So the unit still has to finish its move on a legal square. It couldn't stop on impassable terrain. The second special ability associated with movement that I'm going to look at is ramming. So here we have an orc truck that's lined up against an ultramarine rhino. The orc truck has been given a reinforced ram, which means that it has access to this symbol, which means that it can ram other vehicles. So if the truck wishes to ram that rhino, it first has to position itself so it's adjacent to the rhino. So it moves up until one edge is adjacent to the rhino. At that point, the truck can choose to ram the rhino. To do that, each player looks at the defense value of their unit. So the rhino has a defense value of 7 and the truck has a defense value of 8. If the vehicle is a heavy vehicle, then you use its defense value as is. However, if it's a light vehicle, then you use half of the defense value rounded up. So in this case, the Rhino would have a value of 7 and the truck would have a value of 4. At that point, each player rolls a die and adds it to their modified defense values. If the ramming vehicle gets a higher total than their opponent, then the target vehicle suffers a hit. So we've reached the end of this tutorial about movement and I hope you found this tutorial to be useful. If you have, then please subscribe because I'll be doing more tutorials to help you learn and understand Heroes of Black Reach. If you have any comments about the video, please leave them below and thank you very much for watching.